Hi guys and welcome back to NotFlow. So, the day has come. Today we'll talk about Copernicus and this is the start of a new series on the channel when we start from basic shapes manipulation to how to do slab combs in Solaris and along the road we'll explore the infinite amount of possibilities that this new context offers us. So, if you're just as excited as I am, let's fire up Houdini and let's start. <music> So let's start from the basics. What is Copernicus? So Copernicus is a new contest in Udini and it's a 2D and 3D GPU image processing framework that provides real-time image manipulation and it's ideal for tasks such as building texture maps or setting up slab comps. So in a sense it shares some similarities with softwares like Substance Designer and also with Nuke. But another great thing of Copernicus is its ability to connect with other contexts in Houdini. So by instance you could create an RBD simulations and then bake all the rocks in a single map. Or take your renders and your AOVs and use them to do a nice comp instead of Houdini. Or maybe to create a tune shading. That is also a very interesting topic that I hope we'll have the time to dive into. In Houdini I can start creating a copnet and the first thing I will notice is that we have an old one that I can create and if I go inside you'll see I am in the compositing network. While of course course this is all based in Copernicus so I want the new one so I'll look for cop network and if I go inside this will be Copernicus as you can see over here so Copernicus it's here to replace the compositing contest so make sure to choose the right one and now that we are in Copernicus we can start creating the first node so that will be an SDF shape this node is essential to create any kind of patterns or any kind of shapes as the name implies you could create a variety of different shapes over here right but for now let's start defining why it's called SDF and what is an SDF so SDF stands for sign distance field. It's a type of volume that has different values based on how close to the center the voxels are. So just to explain it better, let me create a layer properties. And if I visualize it from type info, I can now choose none. And now you can see this is a 2D volume and now you can also see the values. So you can imagine that outside we have a value of one, then going here we are getting closer to zero. And when we get towards the middle, so towards exactly the center, we have negative values. So this knowledge of how close and how far the voxels are compared to the center allows more complex operations. So if you're familiar with volumes, we can do operations like ISO offset, extracting the outline of a shape. So for now, let me just delete this one and let me continue. So let's see how this node is made. So we have shape classes. For now, let's leave it to basic. And we can have some basic shapes. I think some of the most important ones are the diamond. Then we have the regular polygon where you can choose how many sides you want. Very useful for any kind of pattern. Then we have stars and we also have triangles. And of course, I will not go through all of them. I will let you explore with all of this as it's supposed to be quite intuitive. Then we can change the shape class. If we choose marker, you see now this one says markers and we have different kind of shapes. So we can definitely consider this one as the main menu and these ones are sub menus. So you see different kind of shapes that looks more like marker style. If we go in compound, we have something that it's a little bit more advanced. So we have like fish scale that it's very, very interesting. We have moon and you will notice that these parameters will change every time I change the shape while the lower parts they will never change. But for the sake of this tutorial, I would like to keep things simple now that we know what SDFs are and why we use them. I was looking for some patterns to recreate and I stumbled upon some beautiful Arabic patterns. So I decided I wanted to recreate this one as it looks quite interesting. So the first thing I did was starting to decompose the shapes. So I found out that to create the main shape, I could just use this node and I could go into basic. And if we choose star and I change the number of sides to eight, you see, we already have a very similar shape to the pattern although we have these lines that are going more towards the center while they should be flat so I found that an angle factor of 2.66 worked perfectly so I can choose SDF to mono this is just one of the conversions operators we have different kind of signatures that's the way they're called in Copernicus so we have the SDFs we have monos we have RGB we have RGBA UVs in order to convert between these different signatures you will have these nodes that are basically converter right so I'm just looking for two and you see we have lots of them in this case, of course, we want to convert from an SDF to a mono, so to a black and white variation. And here we have it. I won't really change anything at all right now, although just for the sake of it, I will be explaining the most important things. So this is the background value, as you can see. This, of course, is just the shape value. Then if we disable the shape, we have the option to enable the outline and we can just create an outline. So I can increase the width, maybe doing something like that. And also you will notice that we can choose the alignment if you want to expand inside or if you want to expand, for instance, like outside. So you see now this one is actually expanding outside. So depending on what you're doing, this thing could be very, very useful. Then you see if I disable the outline and enable the shape again, we have the ISO offset I was talking about. It's very useful if you want to create different kind of shapes. But for now, as I said, I will leave everything as default. 
as I just want to create a variation of this one that would be a little bit smaller. So we'll create a transform node. Pay attention because we have two different kinds of transforms, the 2D and the 3D. Because we are working in 2D, I want to use the 2D one. I will now connect this one here and I will make this one smaller. In the uniform scale, I will choose something like 0.7. Because in this case, I don't want it to be tiling, I can go here in border and I can choose clip. In this way, no matter how small it will be, it will never tile. Now, this is on purpose because the next step will be just to simply create a subtract and I will just subtract this one from this one. You see now, if I visualize the result, we have a very beautiful outline. So the reason I did it in this way and didn't use the outline was that most of the times the outline really softens the borders. And in this case, I really wanted hard borders in the inside and hard borders on the outside. That's why I'm using this operation. Now that we have our basic pattern, we only need to duplicate it and tile it. So ideally, I could just click here on tile visualization. This is very useful to check if your pattern is tiling, although it's just a visualizer. Our pattern is not actually tiling. So I can just remove it. And in order to make it tile, I can create a node called tile pattern. So let me connect my blend into my stamp zero. And let me visualize it. As you can see, now it's tiling. And now we can also appreciate how beautiful this pattern is. And this also gives us the possibility of talking a little bit about the pattern. So as you can see, let's start from the top. I can choose the pattern size, although it's not recommended because usually when you change this one, the pattern will not tile. Now, if, for instance, if I just enable tile visualization, you see now it's perfect. But then when I start changing this one, it will not necessarily tile, right? So be careful with this one. Then you have divisions. Let me disable the visualization and you have divisions. Very straightforward. I will probably put something like six for the sake of it. I think it's more appealing. We have different kind of pattern times that we'll see in the next videos, right? So they will not be all necessarily squared they could be deformed they could be different kind of patterns very very interesting i really suggest you to play with them but for the sake of it for now again just defaults and then we have the rose light offset if you want to add more variations to your pattern right and some options to rotate now this one will just rotate the tiles as you can see well this one will rotate the whole pattern and again as you can imagine this will also affect the tiling so again it's not really suggested and lastly we have the size settings and this is something that i've seen lots of people find annoying that it always gives you like an inset value between the shapes. If we go close, you will see they will not really touch and that's because we have this inset of 0.005. This is on purpose, it's already on, so that's fine. But if you were wondering why they will not necessarily touch, that's because we need to remove this inset. And now we have a perfect pattern. In the next videos, we'll also see the prune tiles operations and the split tiles operations as they can be very, very useful. I will stop now and I will consider my first pattern completed. Then from the second pattern, I still was inspired by Arabic patterns and I'll start as usual with an SDF shape. I want to go into the shape class and I want to change it to marker and and then I want to choose the tag. This will be the base of my shape. So again, as this was my reference, I really wanted to start deconstructing it and start to analyzing the main shape that I could then tile and repeat until I have the full pattern. So with this tag, I will then change some options. So first of all, the uniform scale will be 0.8 and I will move it slightly on X and Y by minus 0.1. Nice. Then I can duplicate this one and I will just change the uniform scale to 0.6 and the translation to 0.5, both on X and Y. Now we want to combine these two shapes. So we have an SDF blend. As you can see, these are more like booleans. So in this case, I want to use a subtract and I want to do this one minus this one. So maybe something like that works fine. Although let's try to play with the parameters, maybe 0.5 over here. And this one could be 0.6. Yeah, that works better. Now we'll just convert this one to mono. So again, SDF to mono. I will visualize it. I will remove the shape and I will enable the outline. In this case, I want the outline width to be 0.05 and I want the alignment to be outside. That's nice. I can now mirror my shape. So I'll create a mirror node. And by default, we have something that we don't really like. I think maybe changing the planes to two and playing with the angle, maybe minus 90 should work. And now we have a shape that resembles a little bit more what we see in the pattern. Now, if we notice, we just miss a cross in the middle. So let's just use the SDFs to create a new one. So I will choose SDF shape. I will then go into marker and then I will choose cross. Let me visualize it. I want to rotate it, of course, by 45 degrees and the uniform scale should be 0 0.7. Now I can simply duplicate this SDF to mono in order to visualize the results. And this time, instead of using the outline, I will be using the ISO offset. So of course, I need to enable the shape. And you see, I will put an ISO offset of minus 0.18. Now, of course, you want to merge both of them. So I will choose a blend. 
I will blend both of them. And as a blending mode, I will choose max over here. Now you see our pattern is complete and the only thing we need is to duplicate it with a tile pattern. So let's create one. I can connect it to this thumb zero. And now we only need to make it bigger. So we need to know where the scale settings are. Let's go down. I will remove the inset and I will play with uniform scale until they start touching so you could leave it like that i think it's beautiful but maybe a little bit more until we have the contact yeah i think something like that is perfect and you see we created the pattern that's a little bit more complex with just a few more nodes than before lastly before closing the video this node gives me the opportunity to talk about how copernicus nodes work so what if i want to see a different kind of output because we have three different outputs i can go here and click on id and as you can see the viewport will show me the id variation so each one of them will have a different value then if i go here i can also to see the UVs for, the, for each one of them. And these are also very, very useful for more complex effects I will see together in this series. So to conclude, I really hope you learned something new. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And maybe you also got a little bit more curious about Copernicus and why it's worth trying it. So if it's like that and you like my content, please consider subscribing as it really means a lot and really, really helped me to understand if you like this kind of content or if you just want me to talk about something else. Don't forget to leave a comment to suggest new topics and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. Thank you.